Hey devs, this is Coding in a Nutshell. In this series, we're going to tone an app called Structure. Structure is a simple day planner app that shows a visual timeline of your day. It is a free app and it combines the functionality of a calendar, a to-do list, and a reminder. You can plan your day by creating small tasks throughout the day. It has notifications and widgets that will remind you when a task starts or ends. You can also add notes or subtasks. It has integration to calendars and Apple reminders. And it syncs to iCloud and has multi-platform support so you can see your tasks in all your devices. And you can customize colors and icons and many more. So let's download and try this out. When I open the app, it goes straight to today's date and at the top is showing the current week and today's date has a different color or I can also swipe the task view left or right and the date at the top for the task view being shown gets selected. Notice that the task view looks like rounded rectangles placed on a horizontal stack. So when the add button is clicked, this will open a new view where I can now create a task. Just enter the what or the title of this task. There are even pre-made tasks already that I can select from. After selecting the task, I enter the time for how long, and when I select the duration from 1 minute, 15, 30, 1 hour, up to 1.5 hours, the time ranges change accordingly. Then, I can adjust the icon and the color. There's even a color picker for more color choices. And finally, I can make the task repeat and set a notification, then it's done. At the top, there are also menu items for calendar, inbox, and settings. When I select calendar, it opens a pop-up that shows a calendar. I think this is easier to select future dates and jump to that date and create tasks for the future. Then I can also edit an existing task. Notice if I change the duration, the circle changes and becomes a rectangle with rounded corners. And I can customize further with colors and icons. So, this will be a series and as a disclaimer, I will not build all of this. I will try whatever I can as a beginner and you can also suggest some solution in the comments section. I hope you continue to support and hit that like and subscribe button. Let's begin. I will start the project and I will use the Xcode 14 beta. I will name the project Day Planner. I usually rename this initial content view to main view. And I also push down the preview provider and get it out of the way as I will not be touching these. I will remove this VStack and we'll start by getting today's date using date. Then I will display this date using text and I will use formatted. With formatted, I can show just the month. I will use wide so it will show the full name of the month. And I can also put the year. I will make this bigger by using font title and we'll also make it bold with font weight. Next, I will place this in an H stack and will drop a few SF symbols here. I will put the calendar, tray fill, and gear. We'll place this in an H stack and I will make it bigger with font title. We'll put a spacer in between so they will be pushed far apart and we'll throw some padding so they will not be at the very edge. Looking good so far. Let's continue with a weekday display. I will temporarily create an array of the week starting with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday up to Saturday and Sunday. And I will use a VStack to place them below this date and SF symbols that we created. Using for each, we go through the array and show it using text. Now they need to have equal widths horizontally. I will use a geometry reader and make their frame widths to be the width of the device divided equally among them. I'm not going to put a bottom padding so that the two views will appear close to each other. I will create a new file as I wanted to create my model straight away. I will create our calendar model. And I will start here as well by getting the current date. I 
I will also create the view model and I will call this day planner. And I will initialize the model here and make it an observable object. And I will make the model publish so that the main view can subscribe and will be alerted for any changes that happens to the model. Now I can change the current date here to come from the model. And I don't need this current date here anymore. Just one simple improvement. I'm going to create extension of date to display the date in month and year format. And this will be returning a string. So I will copy here the formatted. And now that I have this extension in date, I can use it here in current date. Our code will be short and easier to read. I'm going to make the current date in the model as private set so that the only way it can be accessed is via the view model. Let's play a bit with playgrounds and learn about date formatter and calendar. With date formatter, you can specify a format. In my case, it will be year, month, and day. And if I have a string that looks like a date in year, month, and day, I can convert it to a date format using date formatter date. Now this will return an optional in case the string cannot be converted to a date and it will return nil. Using calendar, we can specify what type of calendar to use. As I want Monday to be the start of the week and not Sunday, I will use ISO 8601. If I want to get all the days in the year, I can use range of day in year for the current date. And this gives us a range of 365. Then we can convert this range into an array of dates by adding one into the current date. Our current date is 1st of January. And now we have an array of dates. I will put minus one here so we start with 1st of January and this is our array of dates for the year. Now this current date var doesn't mean today. We will change its value later on depending on which date we select but it starts off with today's date. So I will create another var today which is today's date and this will be the initial value of current date. As I've said we can change the value of current date later on. So let's create a function for that called setCurrentDate, where we will accept a string and convert it to a date. And we'll mark this function as mutating as we are changing the var in this struct. And again, this date will be an optional and will return nil if it cannot convert the string to a date. And we'll check if it is not nil, then we'll assign it to the current date. And I will create this function in the view model so we can access it. Let's try it out. We'll set the current date to April 1st. Now let's create the array of all the days in the year, just what we did in Playgrounds. I will copy and paste these codes into a function called dates in year. And I can call this function in the view model. And I will name the function in the view model just dates. In our for each, I can now call this array of dates. And I will be creating another extension in date that will do some formatting to display the weekday abbreviated. 
And we no longer need this array of strings of weekdays as our data is now coming from the model. And I will display the day as well, and I will create another formatting extension for that. Then we'll place the weekday and the day in Vista. I will just add the font weight. And I will place this in a horizontal scroll view so we can scroll the dates for the entire year. Now, if you notice, our day starts from today's date. I want it to start from 1st of January. So let's do that by getting the current year. Then create a date using current year and month equals to 1 and day equals to 1. That will give us 1st of January for the current year. Now, our array will start from 1st January instead of current date. Now that we have the dates for the full year, I still want the app to start at the current date. Let's try that. I will create a button that will allow us to jump to the current date. Then I will use a scroll view reader and I will have a proxy here that I can tell where to jump. I can say to jump to the 100th position. Now that doesn't work. That is because our for each here is referring to the actual date elements. So we can say here to jump to the date in the 100th position and that will work. Now if I want to specify just the index position, then I need to change the processing of for each here to process the indices and not the date itself. Then for each of the indices, I will get the date for that index and the rest will still work as usual. Now this jump to index 100 will now work. Now I just need to find what position in the array is the current date. Now it doesn't work. It cannot find the current date in the array of dates for the year. Why is that? It is because of time zones. Let's debug this. If you notice, our array of dates for the entire year is in UTC, whereas our current date is not. So let's convert them to be both in the same time zone. I will use UTC. I will set the calendar to be UTC, and I have to convert the current date to be in UTC. Let's just have one common date formatter. And our date formatter will also be in UTC. Now I have to convert first today's date to string. And back again to a date. I'm using date formatter, which is now in UTC. And I will bring this string format here to convert it to string correctly. Okay, let's try this. So all our dates are now in UTC. I think they should match now. Let's jump. And it is now showing the 19th. But it is showing it at the end. Let's put it in the middle by changing the anchor to be centered. Now the current date 19th of July is now in the middle. Finally, I will just remove the jump button and put this code during on appear so that when the scroll view is shown, it will start with today's date in the middle and you can scroll left or right of the current date. I think this video is getting long, so I will end here and I will continue next time. Happy coding!